Hello fellow analog photographers. Today I want to talk to you about a really nice film. The Kodak Gold 200. So let's start right in. Hey! As already mentioned in the beginning, today's video is all about the Kodak Gold 200. But before we start out, I want to say this. I am not sponsored or paid by Kodak in any way to make this review. All I'm gonna say is just my personal and honest opinion. Uh, a little side note, this video goes hand in hand with my blog post about Kodak Gold 200, where you can find some additional information as well as some more example images. The blog post is linked down in the description, check it out. Now let's talk about the film. The Kodak Gold 200 is a consumer grade 200 ASA film, which you can buy in 24 and 36 exposures in single packs, double packs and triple packs, which are also the ones that I bought. It is a daylight balanced film, which means it is meant to be shot during daytime or with flashlight. When I searched my way through the internet to find some more information about this film, I came along lots of people complaining about the film over and over again. Mostly about that they think the film is by far too warm and it totally destroys their images. Then mostly these people posted some example images, which were most of the time indoor shots made in tungsten light. To be honest and without me wanting to hurt any of these people, in this case it is not a problem of the film but a problem of the user of the film. As I already mentioned, the film was made for daylight use and it has a slightly warm color balance which adds pretty nice to the overall look and feel of the film. But it is obvious that when you use a film that has a warm tint and is made for daylight balance inside of a room with tungsten light, well, you're not getting the results you're up for. You could use this film inside with tungsten lights, but therefore you had to put a blue filter in front of your lens. To demonstrate this failure to you, I took a picture indoors of a green plant in warm light and it really does not look nice. So here you can see it. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that you will get heavy green casts if you use this film under fluorescent light. But most of the film stocks out there don't really like fluorescent light, so it's, it's nothing special. It's nothing only about this film, it's, it's something that happens in general. And there are special films made to be used in fluorescent light. And also there are special films to be used within tungsten light. Now let's talk about my personal experiences with this film. Then I'm going to give you my conclusion about this film and then I'm going to show you some more images because I'm sure that's why you are here. I bought my film in a drugstore where I paid about 8 euros for the triple film pack, 36 exposures each. This thing here. And I thought which time of the year could be better to shoot Kodak Gold 200 than the golden days of autumn. I put the film to my camera, shot the whole roll in 2-3 to three days and developed the film at home by myself. I tried to shoot during the day as well as in sunset. So far so good. The first problem, which by the way was also my only problem with this film, started when I wanted to scan the film. I scanned the film using Silverfast, which comes with a pre-made profile for Kodak Gold 200. But with the pre-made profile, the film had some really strong magenta color casts. Using the automatic color cast correction, on the other hand, totally destroyed the look and feel of the film. I first thought that I maybe did something wrong during development, maybe my chemicals were too warm or too cold. But again, visiting lots of forums showed me that lots of people had the same problem. So I decided to scan the images with the magenta color cast and to remove it by hand by myself, so I could be sure not to totally destroy the film look. You will find some before and after images straight out of the scanner, auto color cast correction and my personal correction, as well as a screenshot of my color correction layers in the blog post, which is linked down below in the description. Scanning the film itself besides the color thing went very well. 
I think the film has great scanning behavior and a very pleasing grain. Even though some people are complaining about the grain, I must say for a consumer grade film, it is absolutely awesome. Now I come to my personal conclusion about the film and then you're going to see some more example images. So my personal conclusion is that Kodak Gold can be a really nice film if you use it in the right way. I actually found some photographers that are using Kodak Gold 200 for commercial projects and they create really stunning images out of it. So for what the film gives you, it has a really cheap price and I decided to maybe shoot a whole project on Kodak Gold 200 just to test it out more in depth under a real life shooting situation. Okay, but there are no upsides without downsides. As already mentioned, sometimes Kodak Gold can be somehow work intensive after scanning to get rid of the magenta color cast. And of course it is also just a 200 speed film which makes it nearly useless for situations of bad light. Also if you're going to into bad light situations, some more grain could be introduced into the shadows. Yes, so these are all downsides that I could find. Okay guys, so let me know if you've ever shot Kodak Gold and if you had the same problems or completely different problems. Simply write your opinion about this film down in the comments. I, I can't wait to read them. I'm, I'm really interested in this. Okay, so if you'd like this video, please follow my channel, give me some thumbs up and don't forget to hit that bell button so you will be informed about new videos and stuff. Now enjoy having a look at the pictures which are as usual don't have any deeper artistic meaning. They are just some test images. Here we go, see you soon.